Happy Sabbath. God is good. The fact that we are here this morning to, in his courts, to give him praise and thanks for the six days of toil and labor. We are here this morning and we are so happy. We are about to begin our song service. Our first stage of praises to the Most High. But before we do so, we ask you to stand as we pray. Let us pray. Most righteous eternal heavenly Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for keeping us safe through this, on this past week. As we gather in your courts to worship you this morning, we ask that you will pour out your blessings upon us and give us that blessing that we've come in need of. Be with us now, I pray, and say thanks for hearing in Jesus' name. Amen. What a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and griefs to bear. That's 499. 499. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Jesus. 
Sabbath care, we hail the Sabbath morning. And this morning we are here to tell Jesus about our trials, our troubles, and the sin that besets us. Three, nine, four. Good morning. Welcome to GSDAC 24. Happy Sabbath. I am Marlene Gray. And with me this morning is my co-host, Shireen Lynch Cawley. Shireen, how is it on the outside? Good morning. Good morning, Marlene. I'm coming to you live from the community of Glendevon, Stone Valley Road to be exact, in the vicinity of the Glendevon Seventh-day Adventist Church. It is a cool 24 degrees Celsius this morning. It's a warm, beautiful, and bright day. And guess what? God can. Amen. This morning we are focusing on the theme, God can. My brothers and sisters, I encourage you as you go through life's turmoils, just remember that God can. When men fail you, call Psalm 27. When you have sinned, call Psalm 51. When you are in danger, call Psalm 91. When God seems far away, call Psalm 139. When you feel lonely and fearful, call Psalm 23. Emergency numbers may be dialed direct. No operator assistance is necessary. All the lines are open to heaven 24 hours a day. Good morning, caller number one. Caller number one, happy Sabbath. Let us stand for worship, for prayer. This week was a very rough week 
However, we are here to give God all the glory. O oh, blessed and most merciful Father, we humble come before your presence to give you all the honor and all the glory. We thank you for who you are, because you are God of all. You are our creator, our sustainer. Lord, I pray that you may forgive us from all our sins. Cleanse us, O oh Lord, from all transgressions. And help us that our praise may enter up to you as sweet incense. Bless those who are on their way and hasten their footsteps. All these we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Caller number two. How are you this morning? Good morning and happy Sabbath. I am feeling blessed because I'm alive and I'm in the house of God. So how was your week? My week was good. Um, I had a hectic week because no, normally I get up early every morning to get everyone ready for work and for school. And I'm not working, I'm unemployed, so I'm home most of the time in the day. So most of the time in the day, I try to spend time with God, not on the media like other people do. Sometimes I witness on Facebook also and trying to spread God words so that I can bring men and women who once walked with God to come back and those who have never accepted God before to come back before mercy to close on them. So what do you have to share with us this morning? This morning, I want everyone to join with me as we praise God in Psalms chapter 50 and verses 15. Psalms chapter 50 and verse 15. And call upon me in the days of trouble, and I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. Also, before I go, I would like to just sing a little chorus of this song. I am here today because God kept me. I'm alive today only because of God's grace. Oh, he kept me. My God kept me. He held me close so I won't let go. There's a song that comes to my mind. And I'm going to tell you why it comes to my mind during the course of this week. Now in December, when I got my salary, I realized that 200 and odd thousand was taken back for salary recovery. And I'm like, salary recovery? I was never paid so much money for them to take it back. This month, when I went into my account, what was there was less than even my third and my offering. But I said, Satan, not me, not today, because guess what? I am not going to be dismayed because God can. We are going to sing lustily, my listeners. Be not dismayed, whatever betide. God will take care of you. And I know that some of you, faithful listeners like Sister Jolene can attest to that. God can. Be not dismayed. Hymn, hymn number 99 in your hymnal. And we will sing the first, the second, and the third verses.
over to Shireen. Have you seen anybody there that you would love to talk to? Have yes. you seen anybody while you're out there? Yes. My listeners, God has never ever made a promise that he has never kept. When you look back at your life, hasn't he kept his promises to you? So we are going to turn over to our international news reporter, Sister Gaina, who will be coming to us from the mission field. Abisava Church. Our mission story is entitled to the Gospel Goosebumps. The advertising executive felt goosebump on her arms as strains of beautiful choir music wafted into her office. It was not the first time that she had heard the music while at work behind her desk at the advertising agency that she run in, in Bangalore, India. It also was not the first time that she had felt goosebumps on her arms because of the music. But this time, she could not sit still. Shakuntala went to the window of her second story office to see what was going on. She could see people coming in and out of the building across the street. She wondered what was going on in the building. She looked down at her arms and wondered why she was getting goosebumps. A strong desire filled her to walk over to the building and see with her own eyes what was happening. Slowly, very slowly, she made her way out of her office building and across the street. Then she felt a little uneasy entering the building because she didn't know anyone there. Then she slowly walked in front, in the front entrance. Can I come in and listen to what you are doing? She asked someone standing near the entrance. Come in and sit down, the man said kindly. Shakuntala sat down and began listening. The choir was no longer singing the music of the organ. Instead, a man was singing a cappella. When he finished, Shakuntala boldly walked over to him. Where is the organ? She said. Where are the songs that gave me goosebumps? The man was surprised. Shakuntala explained that she had been listening to the music from her office every Saturday for the past few weeks. She only heard the music on Saturdays. Shakuntala returned to church to listen to the music the next two Saturdays. As the choir sang, she looked in a songbook and found one of the seats. Sorry, she looked in a songbook that she found on one of the seats. She learned the names of the two songs that has been giving her the biggest goosebumps. These, these hymns were The Old Rugged Cross and be still, my soul. On the third Saturday, not, she not only listened to the music, but also stayed for the sermon about Jesus. Back at home, she thought, I like what I heard about Jesus in that church. Since I like it, why do I have the pictures of other gods in my house? She sat down, all, she took down all the pictures and gave them away. She kept going to church on Sabbath and kept feeling goosebumps while listening to the music. After a while, the pastor invited her to bring her family. Don't worry, she said. They will come. And they did. Her son, Joy, first came, and then her grandchildren also became interested. Even her housekeepers started attending. After Bible studies, the family gave their lives to Jesus. 
Shakuntala became an active member in the church. And one of her grandsons now serves as a church youth pastor. Amen? Today, Shakuntala is 84 years old and has retired from working in advertising. But she remains grateful for the music that she heard back in 2005. It led her to Jesus. I still get goosebumps when I hear the choir sing, she says. Part of this quarter's 30, part of the quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help construct a new central English church for Shakuntala's congregation in Bengaluru. Amen? And that's in India. Thank you for the generous offering on March 30 um, that will bring beautiful gospel music and perhaps even goosebumps to many more people in Bangalore. Thank you, Sister Gaynor. Thank you. Shireen, do you see anyone who might have a story which is local? Oh, yes. I just want to let you know that God's word has never failed and it never will. You can trust his timing because if he gave you a promise, he intends to follow through with it. I know that Sister Barbara Panton, one of our very ardent listeners, has a burning issue. Sister Panton, I now turn over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I have a short uh, testimony to give this morning, but before I do, I want to share with you how I go through my trials when they come in the present. Whenever I have a trial or crucibles come in my way, I always reflect on what God has done for me back then. When I do that, I gain the strength because I know he will never leave nor forsake. In 2021, when I was cast down with COVID-19, if we can remember that there was a shortage of oxygen on the island because of COVID, I was in the hospital at that time. My oxygen finished, and when they call over the whole place. They only have, Falmouth said they have one tank of oxygen left. There was a lot of us who needed oxygen at that time in the hospital. And guess me who get the one tank of oxygen. So God can. Amen. God can. And I just want to share this little uh, chorus. I hope you can help me do it. Roll back the curtain of memories now and then. Show me, Lord, where you brought me from and where I could have been. Remember, I'm a human and you. in studio with us this morning, visiting the students of GSDAC 24, four beautiful young ladies, the group, Bells of Hope. Sharina, are you aware that they started with only two members? Yes, I am aware. And those two members were Carisha and Kayla. Oh, yes. And so this morning, because of their beautiful singing, they have joined, two others have joined with them, and so they'll be blessing our hearts with God can still turn it around. God can still turn it around. Over to you, Bells of Hope. I 
it around. I just want to let you know that the Bells of Hope, they are on the top 10 charts for GSCD, GSDAC 24 news radio station. Bells of Hope, continue singing for the Lord. Now God's word has never failed. And we have some reporters out in the field from various communities. Reporters, you have 40 minutes to interact with the citizens wherever you are. And I'm just going to ask our reporters, whichever community you are in, just to stand let the members in the community see you. All our reporters, please stand. I'm going to ask 
ask Sister Colleen Bingham to pray on behalf of the interaction this morning. And listeners, please remember, God can still turn it around. Morning. Thank you for joining us for Sabbath School Discussion. It's time for us to review the Senior Sabbath School lesson. And we are happy that you have joined us online and in-house for us to examine the Word of God together. I'm sure that you would have spent some time during this past week to look at the Word for yourselves in your own private time as the Holy Spirit made impressions on your heart. And I, uh, I, I hope that our review at this time will help to bring back some of those uh, thoughts and will help to reinforce them and that learning will take place and that what you've learned, that you will remember it in the time of trial. You'll remember it when it's time to share with someone else who needs to know this word. And you'll also remember it when you face trials and adversity. And you need the, to, to rely or to refer to the word of God. So, we are at lesson number four. Lesson four. The title of which is, The Lord Hears and Delivers. Of course, we have discovered that the Psalms are written for our time as much as they were written in the historical context of the times in which the, uh, the psalmist wrote. We have discovered much about the Psalms in our first three lessons, so we will just go to the focus of this particular week's lesson. So the Lord hears and the Lord delivers. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the assurance from your word that the God in whom we live and move and have our being is a God who hears us and is a God who delivers. We thank you for teaching us this week and reminding us that you are an ever-present help in trouble. And so we ask you, Heavenly Father, to just be near to every worshiper and minister to each heart according to the needs of each person. And may our lesson this week be a means of preparing us for the trials that await us. And may it give us opportunities, Lord, to share what we have learned with others so that we can be strengthened in the faith and in our knowledge of your word. Thank you and bless us now. For Jesus' sake we pray. Amen. Okay, so I thought as I look at this week's lesson that I would share with us a few facts about hearing. It Bible tells us that the Lord hears, right? The Lord hears. It means then that God have ears. And if we are made in his image, and we have ears, then it's important to acknowledge the fact that he hears. Now, there's a special reason why we have two ears. God made us with two ears. We could have heard from just one because if something goes wrong with one, then the other will help, right? We'll do the work. But we need two ears in order for balancing and in order to be able to detect the direction from which a sound is coming. Right? So if you're walking on the street and a, a car is coming and it blows the horn, then you know it's coming from your right or your left and where you should switch. Okay, so it's important to note. Also, our ears never sleep. The ears are the security system for our body. So even though the body's at rest, the ears are very much open and alert. Now that tells us something about God. Even when we are sleeping, God never sleeps. And so his ears are always open to our prayers and to our cries. The, ear, the sense of hearing is the last sense that leaves the body at the time of death. 
So even when you cannot see, you cannot touch, you cannot be touched, you can still hear the voices around you. And it's, an, it's, it's, it's important to know that if we ever in the, be in the presence of someone who is dying, it's important that we speak comforting words, we speak the scriptures, we don't scream and holler and bawl, you know, if that's controllable, because the person is hearing. And you'd want them to die with the, you know, precious words of life uh, as their final thoughts. So, if the Lord hears, uh, just as how we hear, or even better than we hear, then I suppose that is helping to provide some assurance to us that when we talk to him, he does hear us. Some of us might uh, question the fact or have trouble understanding, how oh, is it that God is so far away? He lives so far away from us, his physical presence, yet he's hearing us. Sometimes I'm praying in the privacy of my bedroom and uh, the other members of the family are not hearing me. But yet God hears. Sometimes I whisper the prayer. Sometimes I'm praying in my heart, in my mind, and God still hears. Isn't that amazing that God's ability to hear is able to transcend the galaxies and the, the skies and the clouds and all the noise that surrounds us? God is able to hear above all of that. It's just amazing to know that our Lord hears and also delivers. Now, when he hears, there's a lot more things that he does. But our lesson this week focuses on his ability to, to deliver. Now, what does the word deliver mean? In our uh, age of uh, internet shopping, we expect, we are, we are, whenever we buy something online, we expect to have it delivered within the time that they promise. Some of us are... Uh, we, we deliver goods and services to our customers and clients. Sometimes some ladies become pregnant and for after nine months they deliver the baby. So delivery is something that we are always seeing happening. But God also delivers. We can say in all those instances that I just identified that God actually does deliver it. And so we have... Uh, assurance this week from our lesson that God is a deliverer. Well, can I say there are even some denominations that are formed just on the basis of God's ability to deliver. So you hear about the deliverance center and all those other, you know, bodies of worship groups. They, it comes from the acknowledgement of God's power to deliver. So our memory text for this week, uh, let's segue into that Psalm 34, verse 17 from the New King James Version. And it's actually a memory text, so it's important that we memorize these passages of Scripture. Psalm 34, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. Wow, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. So, let's look a little at the memory text. The righteous cry. Notice that the crier is qualified. It's not every cry that the Lord hears and delivers. But he specifically is saying here that the righteous. Therefore, there's a condition to this promise. We have to become what? Righteous. Now, we don't become righteous of ourselves. We become righteous by aligning ourselves with the word of God and with Christ and his righteousness, which he imputes to us through justification and imparts to us through the process of sanctification. So we don't, we don't become righteous of ourselves, but he appoints us to be righteous. Uh, but he says, for those of us who follow him, who serves him, who obeys him, who look to him, who acknowledge him in our lives, whenever we cry out, the Lord hears. The Lord hears. And the promise is that he delivers. Now, this is in the present tense. So he's not saying he will deliver, or he might deliver, or he should deliver, or he could deliver. 
but he actually delivers. And as we continue to, to, to look at the content of the lesson, we will discover that this, the, the Psalms are all about God and what God, who God is and what God does, all right? Now, God, our God, the God of the Psalms, is a living, active being. He's a personal God and very personable as well. You can have a one-to-one -one with him. Well, we do have a one-to-one -one with him. It is by him we live and move and have our being. All right? So as we uh, associate with him, we become friends with him. We establish, we form a relationship with him. And for that reason, he, he becomes very personal to us. He's also very near. Yep, he might live eons away. He, he, we might not be... be be able to go into his physical presence because of this because of sin but he is very near he draws near to us he bends down low to hear us god is very near he's very personal he's living he's alive he's very active he's not uh, a, a distant relative um, who lives far away in a foreign land god is close he's near to every single one of us, each and every one of us, all the time. All right? So when we cry to the Lord, he hears and delivers us out of our troubles. So this is speaking of the intimacy of God and his desire to be near to us in our times of tribulation. The Psalms are meaningful precisely because they are prompted by and are addressed to the living God who hears and answers prayers. Now, there is a little movie that uh, swirling around in, you know, on, on the, the waves. That the, the name of it is, uh, I think it's Bruce Almighty, where this man uh, is assuming the role of God. And taking on all the things that God is known to do. And it got to a point where he got just so frustrated that he just gave up on it. He said, God, take it back. God actually gave him the chance to, you know, be God for a day, for a little time. But he couldn't manage it. Only God, the true and living Jehovah God, could be God. So there's something about God that gives us this uh, assurance and this audacity to believe that he hears and that he delivers. And that's the fact that on Sunday, our author takes us to Psalm 139, verses 1 to 18, which speaks about our frame was not hidden from him. So, what is the frame that he's talking about? Our frame is actually the, the outline of our bodies, or the, 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 the masterpiece, the mold from which we are all each created. And you know that they always say, every one of us have our own molds. So our frame was not hidden from him. Psalm 139 is one of those very common and popular psalms that are used for songs and for, you know, recitals because it speaks so much about who God is. Now, the Psalm chapter 139 identifies God as being everywhere. That means he's always present. So because of that, he knows everything, right? So it speaks about the omnipresence and the omniscience of Almighty God. It also talks about uh, the fact that he made us. And because he makes us, then he knows us. As we read through this psalm, we will discover... Uh, a number of statements that are being made by the psalmist in relation to who God is and God's knowledge. It says, he knows our inward and our outward parts. What is that saying? God knows our physical makeup, our structure. He's the one who created us anyway. He formed us in our mother's womb. And he brings us through the gestation period to full term. And he's the one who is responsible for delivering us. Right? So he knows everything about our inward parts. He knows our genetic structure. 
and that we will come to resemble our, which of our parents or our grandparents and which brother and sister will resemble, will look alike. He has already determined that long before we came into existence. So God knows our inward parts. He knows all our organs. He knows down to the, stru the cell structures. Well, guess what? He says that he numbers the hairs on our head. So every single strand of hair has a number. So God knows our inward parts as much as he knows our outward parts. Now guess what? We can see our facial structure or physical features in a mirror by turning and spinning and all those kind of fancy stuff. But there are some parts of us that we cannot see, but God sees it all. So God knows our inward parts. Guess what? He not only knows our thoughts, but he knows our imaginations. He knows what we are imagining. As a matter of fact, it is he who places within us these imaginations. And it is usually a picture of what he desires for us. So he knows our imaginations. He knows we're sitting down to rest. And when we rise up to go to work, he watches us. His eyes are fixed on us. Isn't that amazing? But that knowledge, what does it do for us? Does it, when we un undergo this kind of divine scrutiny, does it cause us to... To, to, to shrink from God's presence, well, that's not going to help because the, uh, the psalmist says if he goes into hell, into the grave, or into the depths of the sea, even there, God is able to find him. So when we go to bed, when we are in the bathroom and we close the door and we step into the shower and we strip ourselves naked, God saw us. He sees us when we put the clothes on and when we're walking on the road and mincing our feet. He sees us. So, what is that telling us? We don't need to hide from God. He wants us to come open before him because he's already seen us. He's seen all, he knows that we're thinking all the time. He knows if we're going to say yes or we're going to say no to a request. He knows what we're, gonna, what we're thinking about the person who is passing us on the street. The person who we have not forgiven and who keeps coming up in our mind, yep, he knows we're thinking about that person too. So, the psalmist is saying, because God is everywhere and he sees all things and he knows all things, then he's able to do whatever he needs to do on our behalf. I discussed with our children in summer school, Bible class a few weeks ago, the the, the, the feature of God, the characteristic of God being the almighty. You know why God is almighty? God is almighty because he has all that he needs to do what he needs to do all the time. God is bigger than all of us put together. God is all powerful. He has the might to sustain his power. So, that's the God who we worship and serve. There's a comment in our lesson for those who have the, uh, the Sabbath School Bible Study Guide. Uh, it's on page 29 for the member's uh, Bible Guide. It says, God has both the perfect knowledge of us and of our circumstances and also the means to help us. Therefore, his promises of help and deliverance are not shallow platitudes, but firm assurances. So whatever God says he will do, he can do it because he has the resources to do it. He has the power to do it. He has the ability to do it. He has all that he needs to do it. So we can take him at his word. We can trust his promises because God's word are true and faithful. God's wonderful knowledge is the result of his creatorship and his close acquaintance with his people and is manifest in his care for them. So, because God knows us, because God is able to see us at all times, then God is able to hear us and to deliver us from uh, the troubles that we might experience. So, how about assurances of God's care. The psalmist says in Psalm 40 verse 1 to 3, 
that I wait patiently on the Lord. Let's turn to that passage for those who may not have read it during your studies this week. Let's look quickly at what the psalmist says. Psalm 40, verses 1 to 3. And please allow me to read it uh, quickly for you uh, while you follow in your Bibles. The psalmist says, I, wait, I waited patiently for the Lord. Now, this is a testimony from the psalmist because this is now in the past tense. I did. I waited patiently. I sat and I folded my legs. I fell asleep. I'm waiting on the Lord now. I fell asleep. I cut my nails. I, I, I did all the things that I could have done while I'm waiting on the Lord. Patiently. I didn't get up and look at the clock and look behind and look at the clouds and wondering where he is and when he's going to come. He said he waited patiently. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Inclined. He drawn near. He didn't decline. He didn't recline. He inclined. He drew near. He came close to me. And he heard my cry. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit. Now, you'd see the kind of description that David uses here. He said it was a horrible pit. Horrible, despicable pit. It was a pit that needed, uh, that, that he could not have come out of by himself. Right? He said he brought him out of a horrible pit. And what did he do? Out of the miry clay. The miry clay is a slippery clay that you cannot get your grip on. You ha somebody has to actually drag you out. And that's where God took him from. And I just want to bring that home to us in a practical sense. It says God is, because God is very personal. And because of his personal, the, the fact is easily, he's accessible to us. Let me put it that way. What kind of troubles do we find ourselves in? I, I just want to, uh, to qualify what these troubles are. And I'm sure that you can relate to them. What are some of the troubles? Opposition. Pressure. Chastening. Somebody curse you out. Illness. Anguish. Testing. Tribulation. Misfortunes. Calamity, affliction, distress, unhappiness. All of these are troubles that God is able to remove us from. David himself experienced adversity. David, while he was a shepherd boy, he was constantly under the threat of wild beasts, bears and lions. He had lost sheep that he had to go on in search of in, in, in caverns and over precipice. That was adversity for David. He had to deal with wacky weather sometimes and natural disasters like we are exposed to from time to time. He had to deal with drought and food shortages and he had to go far distances to find food for the sheep. That was adversity. He had to deal with prayer lastness. People who wanted to steal the sheep. When he became king, he was constable. Prior to becoming king, he was, uh, when he was anointed, he was constantly being chastened by King Saul. His life was constantly at stake, right? When he became king, he had to deal with the tragedies within his family. So David was familiar with the very adversities that we encounter and are going through today. So he's writing from experience, and these experiences are similar to the very experiences that we have. So actually, what is he saying? We can apply his, the promises and the, 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 the evidences that he has of God fulfilling these promises to him. We can apply them to our own experiences. I wish I had time to tell you of the adversities that I've been through. And how calling upon the Lord, he was a present help in these times of trouble. I'm sure you also have your own experiences of deliverance as our God is a defender and a deliverer. Why is he a defender? God is a defender of, from the bullies. God is a defender 
from the plaintiffs who brings us to court for, you know, or as neighbors you have some issues. Sometimes it's an accident on the road and you have to go to the courts. So many things that causes us to stand before the unjust judge. And God stands in defense of his people. He delivers us not just from our other human beings. He delivers us from ourselves sometimes. God is a deliverer from trouble. And he has been known for being a constant help to his people, Israel. When we look back at Israel during their wanderings, well, even before their wanderings in the wilderness, he delivered them from Egyptian uh, bondage and captivity after 400 years of slavery. So he has also delivered our four parents. All of us, most of us are children of slaves who, who were brought to this country from Africa. Uh, right to here to Jamaica. And uh, we were delivered from slavery eventually. And many of us have become slaves to sin, slaves to appetite, slaves to pornography, slaves to drugs, slaves to, to, to malice, slaves to all kinds of vices. And we can testify about God's deliverance. Many of you uh, who are here in the sanctuary today, would have had your own deliverances from cigarette smoking and alcoholism. Your deliverances from abusive relationships. You've had deliverances from debt. You have deliverances from, you know, all kinds of uh, misfortunes that may have come your way. But who do we account? Who do we credit for our deliverances? Do we credit our parents? Do we credit the church? Do we credit the, the judge? Do we credit our lawyers who stood by us? Do we credit our employers? No, God is the deliverer. God is the defender uh, of his people. Sometimes uh, the defense and the deliverance comes from the sanctuary. God's sanctuary is a place of refuge, is a place of uh, from which our help comes. Our help comes from the Lord, from the sanctuary, because our God is actually in the sanctuary. That's where he ministers from. That is where he's hearing our prayers. And that is where he has his resources for us. All right? So the psalmist in Psalm uh, 3, verse 4. Let's quickly look at Psalm 3, verse 4, to see how we find in our God uh, help from his sanctuary. He says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. His holy hill is a synonym for the sanctuary. The holy hill, the sanctuary was in Jerusalem, right? First, the sanctuary was a mobile a tabernacle that would move with the children of Israel wherever they were encamping. But when they settled in Canaan, uh, then the sanctuary service was moved to Jerusalem, the temple in Jerusalem, right? Uh, but though the, te the temple was a vast structure, but within the temple was the sanctuary. And even now, our God is in the sanctuary. Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, our Savior, is in the heavenly sanctuary ministering on our behalf. And he has every resource within his capacity to uh, send us help from the sanctuary. So it's a place of safety. It's a place of help. But it's also a place of salvation. The sanctuary provides a shelter to the troubled when we are weighed down by the, the trials of life, by the, the issues wherewith we have to do, and may I say this, uh, when we look at adversity, adversity really are God's, they, they are God's way of getting our attention. God allows adversity to get our attention, and most times, Adversity is greater than our ability to resolve. Sometimes adversity comes in multiples, more than one trial at a time. And so sometimes before we are not able to resolve them on our own, 
tells us that we need the help of the one who knows us, the one who creates us, the one who saw in advance that these troubles were coming and actually made preparation to, for us to meet them. So all we need to do, brothers and sisters, is to call upon the Lord. That's, the, that's all he asks us to do. Cry out. Let him hear your voice. Don't just sit there and wallow and, and self, in self-pity. Call upon the Lord. You need a pair of glasses. Call upon the Lord. You have the, your, your bills are due and you don't see where the money is coming. That's a trouble. That's adversity. Call upon the Lord. Right? How do we call upon him? We call upon him in prayer. I remember a few months ago, you know, my boy went to school and he didn't come home at the time that we expected him. And when I realized, oh, I can't get to the driver, and I started walking. And while I'm walking, I'm praying. I'm saying, God, where is he? Please help that he, we will walk and meet into each other. And lo and behold, while I was walking to him, he was walking toward me. Call upon the Lord. When you're walking through the streets, through the market, call upon the Lord. Don't be afraid. You're in the airplane and you're going through turbulence and, you know, you're afraid. Call upon the Lord. You're driving in traffic and you're late for an appointment. Call upon the Lord. You're on the job and you feel like you're being oppressed by your employer or by colleagues. Call upon the Lord. The promise is that he will hear he will hear us and he will answer and he will send help from the sanctuary. There's so much more that we could have talked about from this lesson this week. But of course, we never always have enough time. This is just a review. And so we ask you to make sure that you uh, spend your time to, to study and to explore these lessons on your own. Know that the Holy Spirit will reveal to you uh, these truths and uh, you can be able to share them with others. But as we uh, come to a close, I just want to remind us of uh, what the, uh, the servant of the Lord in the book Patriarchs and Prophets, page 203, with our summary says. She says, the reason why God's professed people have no greater strength is that they trust so much to their own wisdom and do not give the Lord an opportunity to reveal his power in their behalf. So many of us have been struggling. Many of us have been uh, be, be, been overcome by trials and tribulations. We have lost our footing. We have lost our faith because we have been trusting in ourselves and we are a constant, complete failure every time. Why don't we just let go? Why don't we just give in? Why don't we just surrender and allow God who knows us, who knows all things, who exists uh, and, and ever lives to make intercession for us, takes us through our difficulties. Remember, he already appoints them, right? He appoints them and he has a way out. I trust my brothers and my sisters that as we uh, move into next week's uh, lesson, singing the Lord's song in a strange land, that we will not forget what we have studied this week because we don't just study them you know, for just head knowledge and just for education. We study them for inspiration and for application. So may the Lord be that present help to you and who will be there to deliver you in your time of trouble. Oh, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for guiding us through this lesson review this week and for helping us to understand your message to us. Father, we could not uh, say everything in these few moments, but help us to make time with you, to have an appointment with you where we'll sit and discuss with you. We'll talk to you and listen to you as you speak to us, as you reveal your truths to us. May the Psalms continue to be an inspiration to each of us as we continue to explore the God of our salvation through the psalmist throughout this quarter. Thank you for hearing and for answering and for blessing us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
church. Yes, Grandma, I tell her that you said to tell her that you are not here. Hello, listen. If you ever, I know I told you to tell her that I'm not here. That's what I do, Grandma. You said I must tell her that you are not here. So I tell her that Grandma said to tell her that you are not here. Hello. Anyhow, you let Sister Mary come back because you know when Sister Mary come, she got one money to borrow. And I don't have it this trip. No, Grandma, don't worry. I make sure I lock the gate so when she comes, she has to call. So I will just run out there and tell her the same thing again that she can go. <laughs> Look, no, tell me something, dog Keith. Have you done your homework? Grandma had done that in flying colors. Long time, long time, long time. Wait, when did you do that homework, Keith? Grandma, I finished the homework. No, I asked you when. Um, I get it. I finish it the same day that I get it, Grandma. I don't understand your kids. Why are you lying? Grandma, kids, I am not lying. I looked at the book and you are lying. And I, I'm teaching you not to lie, kids. Grandma, it's not a lie. I can't believe that you are becoming a liar. No, Grandma, it's not a lie. What is it? Grandma. Yes. You tell me to tell Sister Mary that you are not here. No, that's not lying, Keith. Exactly, Grandma. No, no, but you are lying because you did not do your work, Keith. I saw but it in Grandma, the book. you were right here when you tell me to tell Sister Mary that you are not here. So, Grandma, if you are not lying, if I said I finished the homework and I don't really finish it, I wouldn't be lying, Grandma. You know what? You always know how to analyze things. Yes, Grandma. And you know... Grandma, you are my grandmother. <laughs> and I learn from the best. <laughs> so, Grandma. I can't... Look here, kid. You know, sir, I've had truth, though. You know, sir, sometimes that's what we do. I didn't even realize that by just telling her to tell Mary I'm not here, that I was lying... Okay, Boy, Grandma. you know what? I need to go and confess my sin to the Lord. Okay, Grandma. And you need to confess too. So, you know, it's oh, always yes, good. Grandma. You know that you teach me a lot too. Yes, Grandma. So, guess what, Grandma? We are going to sit down and we are going to talk to God about this part. Yes. Both of us together. The both of us do it together, so we will confess together. Anyway, Grandma, I have a little thing that I need to go and finish up. So I will get back to you in about 10 minutes. And come with your assignment so we can do it together too. Okay, Grandma. I tell you, can you imagine? And I saw it happen, you know, we try to tell him to do the right thing and we are not doing it. You know what? I have some boys and girls that I need to go and talk to. Let me go and talk to my boys and girls. Boys and girls, I want to encourage you, please, whatever you are saying, you know, to the adults, whatever adults you are saying to the boys and girls, make sure you set the right example. Because just like in this kid, that grandma is lying and says not lying, many times as adults we are lying. And if we are lying, we need to tell the children that yes, we are lying, acknowledge what we are doing. Remember that Jesus don't like liars. He wants us to confess our sins. So go now, boys and girls. Confess your sins. Bigger boys and girls do likewise. Remember, Grandma loves you. Welcome back to GSDAC 24. This morning when we started at 9.15, I am sure a lot of you were not yet tuned in. And so I use this opportunity to remind you, to inform you that our theme under consideration this morning is God can. God can. And so at this time, I, I will allow our visitor to the studio, Fernando Broomfield, to extend welcome. Happy Sabbath Church. Let me say it one more time. Happy Sabbath Church. You're looking so lovely down there. It's my privilege to welcome you to Sabbath School. And I just want to let you know that if you were not here this morning, there will be no church, there will be no Sabbath School. So give yourselves an amen. 
by way of visitors. Do we have any visitors here today from the community or from another sister church? If you are here, uh, please rec be recognized, raise your hand or stand. Any, any such visitors around? Ah, well, welcome, welcome, welcome. What do you say, church? Welcome. On that day, when we go to heaven, it is Jesus Christ himself who will offer the first welcome to us as his children. Have you ever thought about that? The first Sabbath school in heaven will be conducted by Jesus and he's going to give us that special welcome. So I implore you to keep on coming until that day when Jesus will take us to heaven. Have yourselves a wonderful day and a blessed Sabbath. As we close yet another Sabbath school, and as we tune out from GSDAC 24, it is now 10.35 a.m. We leave you with this thought. When you are going through a storm and you feel discouraged, just remember that God can. He knows what is best for your life. If you feel like your goals are hard to achieve or even impossible, think again because God can. Anything is possible with God. He has your back and will help you through everything. All you have to do is have faith knowing that God can. God will make a way when there seems to be no way. God can do anything. I am Shereen lynch Golly, And I am Marlene Gray. Saying, whatever, whatever you are, are going, going through, through, rest assured that God will work it out. Stay blessed. The bells of hope will now sign us out. I've been dreaming of a city far beyond the sky where the suffering's over. Get my wings and fly when Jesus says it's over. Oh, joy that will be when it's no more dreaming I'll be home at last I've been dreaming of a city Jerusalem 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 oh I've been dreaming of a city Jerusalem my home right up in the sky Oh, sometimes I lose direction Satan clouds my mind When Jesus stands to remind me That I'm passing through Instead of losing heaven, I must look to the day where it's no more dreaming. I'll be home at last. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Jerusalem, my home right up in the sky. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Oh, I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, my home right up in the sky. All of my troubles will be
Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Are you happy to be in the house of God today? I'm here to promote personal ministries, and I want to just take a few moments, and as our young persons have just sung about dreaming of a city, if we say we're going to go there, then we have mission work that we must do. And so this year we are promoting all the family in mission. How many of us have received this card? So several of us haven't gotten the card. It says WJC 80th Anniversary 2024 Mission Focus, Nurturing Each Other and Winning Another. And it's a pledge card. You have not received it. So we have some more work to do. Can I just ask those of you who have already received the card that you complete it and have it turned into one of our personal ministries uh, officers today, and those of you who have not yet received, and um, let me just ask Natalie to take a look around again, for those of you who have received, which means the rest of us have not. So can I just ask you to indicate again, those of you who have received this card. All right, so we need to have some cards um, sent out, please. Go ahead. All right, so we're just not just asking you to do that. We are also asking you to ensure that we are exercising um, by utilizing the units that we are assembling in respect of this commitment that we are making. And the witnessing units look at couples, single adults unit, single youth, and child. Those are the areas of focus and we want to ensure that everybody is involved in ministry this year. So there's no excuse for us not to do what God has asked us to do. And as we say, we are dreaming of a city called Jerusalem. We can't go there empty-handed. We have to be taking people with us. And secondly, I just want to remind everyone, tomorrow afternoon we will be having in person face to face evangelistic meeting i'm imploring everyone as far as is possible i know tomorrow is a tight day because we have funerals here but i'm encouraging you as far as is possible to come out it is great when we are together when we bond together when we worship together we need all the fuel that we can get to face the challenges of the week so I encourage all of us who can come. Andre, welcome to church. I haven't seen you in a while. It's great to have you in the house of God today. And as we encourage and nurture, we look forward to that day of harvest when we can go home to be with our God. And I'm, I'm sharing space this morning with education because it is part of the process of letting people know about this God that we serve through our speaking, through our living, through our doing. So as I hand over to Sister Thomas, I just ask for you to give her your undivided attention. 
Thank you for so much, Sister Carr. Happy Sabbath, brethren. Happy Sabbath, Glendavon. I'm so happy to be in the house of the Lord today to worship with you. But more so, I'm so happy to bring you good news from the education department of our church, which not only involves Glendavon, it involves the entire Jamaica, the entire union. And for this year, the union has charged us to sponsor our students. There are students who are in need. There are students who need help. There are parents who want to send their children to our institution, but the excuse is always that they don't have the money. Brethren, education is priceless, and more so Christian education. At this time in our life, we are seven-day Adventists, and if we have children, we are to give them to the Lord. And I firmly believe that Christian education is the way we ought to go. Right now, there are applications are open for Harrison. I spoke with Sister Brevet last week, and she told me that grade one is full. But she's going to try and create another grade one. Brethren, who is filling up our schools? The unbelievers. Seventh-day Adventist parents are not sending their children to our institutions. Sister Desreen, about approximately how many students you have who are Seventh-day Adventists in this school? About 5%. About 5%. And this has been the norm. Brethren, we need to change that. Just like how we believe that we are the Adventist people looking forward for the second coming of Christ, and we worship on a Sabbath, we are to send our children to our institutions. So those of you who still have children of school age, I would love to send them to our institutions. The doors are open. They are going to create another grade one at Harrison, but the application starts to go in now. So please see me if you are interested. And Sister Smith is always here. The preschool needs you. And of course, we need your support. We need your support. We have been sponsoring students. And praise be to God, they have been successful. And we want to continue that. As a matter of fact, we could say that we are probably one of the trendsetters here at Glendavon. The union is just catching on. But it takes cash to care, brethren. On your tidy develop, up, please dedicate something towards educating our children. May God bless you all. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath, church. Let me hope that your Sabbath thus far has been a wonderful one and that you have been blessed. All right. Um, early in the year, Nicola, which date was it again? January... Something up there. Colleen, why are you um, like that? I'd ask the church for sponsorship or to send 10 youths to the conference. And church, these are your youths. These are the ones that was paid for and we went to the camp, to the conference for or under our theme, revive, renewed, going for more in 2024. Now this morning, our youth, they learned something. All of them will not be presenting this morning, but the ones that will be presenting will tell us what they actually learned at the two-day conference that we were at. Go ahead. Good morning, everyone. The JAMU was the JAMU Union was in collaboration with some organizations. Some organizations were CPFSA, TPD Co. Um, IADFA, NCU, NCU I, ASI, and other ones. They came and they spoke about. They had um, booths, booths, and they spoke about what they would offer and all those stuff. Yeah. Okay, all right. Um, morning, everybody. They were also presenting on um, things like people struggle with, like something called worst case scenario. This refers to the most negative or unfavorable outcome that could occur in a given situation. So. What are the ways we can manage WCS? Worst case scenarios, thinking,
can be managed by focusing on realistic assessments, developing coping strategies, and practicing mindfulness to stay grateful in, in the present. Seeking support from friends, family, or mental health professionals can also be beneficial. Amen. The next person. On Sabbath, January 13, the pastor spoke about fallacy control, which is a part of the worst case scenario syndrome. And this is where a person assumes an inaccurate amount of control in a situation or in their life. Now, symptoms of fallacy control, this is where a person takes blame or responsibility for everything and anything, or apologizes out of guilt that they have failed for those around them, mm -hmm. or find it difficult to delegate to work with others. Now, how can someone cure this? Well, they can cure this by accepting what is out of their control and recognizing they're, that they are imperfect and that failure is normal and a part of life. Amen. They also talked about family in mission, that we should all have a commitment to mission when it comes to spreading the word of God to others. We young people in the Seventh-day Adventist Church should step out to be counted and to finish the work that God has established, to, that God has called us to do. We, the church, is established to share the everlasting gospel and to, read others, and to lead others to the love of Jesus so that they can be saved as well. Amen. We also, the youths of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, should also be going deeper in, into Christ and studying his word more so that we can be able to share the true message with person in the community, school, etc. We are God's family, and we should also help to bring others to join our family so that we can all be sealed together in his kingdom. Amen. So one of the speakers presented on child abuse in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, mm -hmm. and there are several tips that church members should know. Number one is church policies and guidelines. Be familiar with child protection policies established by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Two, educational programs. Participate in or support church programs that educate members about child abuse prevention, recognizing signs of child abuse, and appropriate reporting procedures. Three, background checks. Advocate for thorough background checks for church staff and volunteers working with children, ensuring a comprehensive screening process. Four, reporting procedures. Understanding and follow the established reporting procedures within the Seventh-day Adventist Church for suspected cases of child, abu child abuse to facilitate swift action. Communication channels. Promote open communication with the church community, emphasizing the responsibility to report any concerns or suspicions related to child safety. All right, thank you. Finish, Ananka? Are you finished? No. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> safe spaces. Encourage the creation of safe environment within the church. Pri prioritize yes. yeah, of well, <laughs> the well-being and protection of children in all activities and setting. And the last guideline is leadership accountability. Hold church leaders accountable for enforcing and upholding child protection policies, setting an example by prioritizing the safety of all members, especially the children. Amen. Amen. All right, so you will be hearing from the others this afternoon because we're given some time to work with. We're trying to work with our time. All right, thank you, young people. Thank you so much. Continue to listen, and we will all learn so that you can share it with the church. Thank you so much. All right, Nicola. Yes. Yes, you Colleen. You come tired this morning. Listen, You're tired. Listen. Where you run from? Me I run comfy. Come tell you say we have camp. What you say? Yes, man. Me I come tell him say we have camp. When? Say, Mister No. Over the Easter, March what? Twenty eighth through the first. Me say. So Nicola. Yes. Talk to me, man. Where are we going to camp? We are going to Belmont. Why we are say? going to Belmont in Westmoreland. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and Why girls, everybody, Nicola, everybody must come. Not miss me. No. Let me see the hands of all the new believers in church this morning. 
the hands of all the new believers, those who have been in church for the past six years that have been baptized. Let me see the hands. Let me see. The, put up the hands, oh, man. man. Put up. More hands all right. are here. So you see the new believers, they're all going to camp. You know that? Of course. Then of course. All of them are going to camp. All of them are going to camp, Nicola. All of them. You know, Sandra go to camp. Of course, she has and to go to camp. And you know, Sandra upon the banquet committee. Of course. And you know what was upon the banquet committee? Ooh. Sister Barrett, Jolene. You say you think like me. They head banquet. You think like me. Let me tell like you. Me. And you know who are the head of the food department? <laughs> no brother Downs in the kitchen. Listen. Why you say Sister Dabs in the kitchen? So that means they have to come to camp. They have to come to camp, Nicola. Because when we get them to camp farm, make them tell we know. So, so hold on. So, so how much for camp? Girl, me say. Later. Later, I want to meet with all those who are going to camp and all those who want to go to camp. So, man, so, so we can. After church, uh -huh. after divine hour, right. they all go and meet with on the right hand side. Right here, so. For them get them farm right. and all of the information about camp. Because that is guess right. what? All of us is going to. Belmont Academy. Eh, eh. Hi, yes. hi, see you later. Happy Sabbath Church. Announcement for Sabbath, January 27, 2024. Please be reminded, the clerks, auditors, and treasurers workshop for St. James is scheduled for Sunday, January 28, 2024 at the West Jamaica Conference Auditorium starting at 9 a.m. We invite all clerks and assistants to come out and bring your devices, preferably a laptop plus notebooks, notepad, and a pen for the session. Pathfinder Club resume February 4th, 2024 at 8 a.m. on the church premises. Start preparing mentally and physically for resumption. Easter camp is in the year. It's March 28th to April 1st, 2024 at the Belmont Academy in Westmoreland. We will be camping with the Salt Spring District and it promises to be to be a wonderful event. You are asked to start saving and preparing for the experience. Additional information regarding costs will be shared at a later date. Parents who are interested in sending their children to Arison are asked to speak with Sister Nadine Thomas. The funeral service for Brother Samuel, a member from Brother Anthony Bernard's Sabbath School class, will be January 28, 2024, right here at the SDA Church, Glendavon, at 11 a.m. Interment will follow at Opel Cemetery. The funeral service for Sister Blossom, that's the mother of Pastor Ilton, will be at the SDA Church, right here, Glendavon, on February 4th, at 11 a.m. Interment follows at the Illview Cemetery. The funeral service for Leon Pamel, the brother of Sister Karen Mesam Walker, will be on Sunday, February 18 at 11 a.m. Right here at the Glendavon SDA. Interment will follow at Illview Memorial Park. Sister Beverly Brown is discharged from the hospital and is at home. She's asking for your continued calls and prayers. She also thanked the church for the visit and calls. Parents are reminded to take the children to Sabbath school. Please, parents, take out the children on time for Sabbath school and also go through the lesson, study with them. There will be a recommitment service for the teachers of the children's division. This will be on the upstairs during the Sabbath school session. The youth department will be having their youth meeting at 3 p.m. and youth Bible class at 3.30 on the upper room. Closet day will be February 11 at 9 a.m. at this gas station down by Sun Valley Road Please invite your neighbors and friends. 
This is the first reading for a transfer of membership for the following persons. Sister Nate, Natania Ferrer Woodley, Brother Alan Woodley from the SDA Church Glendavon to SDA Church Cops. Sister Attila Campbell from the SDA Church Glendavon to the SDA Church Lilliput. And Sister Thelma Lewis from the SDA Church Glendavon to SDA Church Farmites. This coming Sunday, January 28th, we'll be, we'll be having our in-house evangelistic meeting commencing at 7 p.m. Kindly come out in your numbers to support the meeting. Funeral service for Sister Enid Shuttlewood will be on Wednesday, February 7th at the SDA Church, Glendavon, and that's at 10 a.m. Happy 37 belated anniversary to brother and sister Leroy McDonald Sr. They celebrated their special day on January 25th. Greetings are coming from the Family Life Department as well as the church family. Glendavon SDA present board game Evelyn. Come let us play and bond together. Bring a board game along with you. This is shortly after Vesper this evening, and refreshments will be served. Mentorship training will begin tomorrow, Sunday, January 28th at 4 p.m., and that's via Zoom. And for those persons who just come on board, as well as those who will be finishing up, are invited. The Women's Ministry Department is inviting all women and young girls from age 18 upwards to the launch of its Women's Fellowship on February 10th after Vesper service. Please make this a date. The Simits family of the late Nakalev Simit wishes to express their sincere gratitude for your prayers and support throughout their time of bereavement. Special thanks to the Children's Ministry, Pathfinder and Adventures Department and everyone that participated and attended the Thanksgiving service, virtually or physically. Continue to pray for the family while we pray for you. The West Jamaica Conference invite, invites you to Mission, Ministry, and Mentorship Convention 2024 under the theme, Building on Our Legacy, Preparing for Eternity, and this is at the West Jamaica Conference Auditorium on February 3rd, and it starts at 9.15. A special invitation to the church officers. The thought for today, and since we are studying in our lesson Psalms, um, I see it fit for this thought today. It says from Psalms 37, verse 5 to 6, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And he shall bring forth thy righteousness as the light, and thy judgment as the noonday. Have yourself a wonderful day. At this time, we'll have the three minutes break to move into divine hour. Thank you.
Good morning, everyone. Just an addition to the announcements about the funeral service for Brother Samuels. A bus has been provided at a cost of $1,000. So those who are interested, a bus will be provided. $1,000. Thank you. Right. Sabbath morning, brothers and sisters. Let's go again. Happy Sabbath morning, everyone. Thank you so, so much. Indeed, it's good to be alive despite all our struggles, and it's good that we can continually come together in the house of the Lord, especially on the Sabbath, to worship Him and to exalt His name because, of course, He is worthy. As a fixture, to our Sabbath's program. Yes, we know we have the intercessory prayer during the divine hour, but as a special feature and fixture, as individuals continually request special prayer, and we know how powerful it is when we pray, we will be having the elders praying in a brief uh, session around this time each Sabbath as best we can. And so this morning, we will be uh, doing that. Yes, Elder Mark Tyson will be saying a very special prayer uh, for the congregation and for a number of individuals who are affected or who desire special prayer where you will get the opportunity to actually meet here at the altar and we will have a brief prayer session. And so we know at this time that our brother Clifton Green, he's one who was sick, um, he's actually out of the hospital and doing quite well now. As a matter of fact, he's at Spring Mount now and uh, doing fine, and he's asking us to continue to pray for him. So that's Brother Chris Clifton Green. We know Sister Vivian Brown was also in the hospital. I was able to visit her again yesterday, and she was discharged so she should be out at home resting today let the church praise the lord yes because they did request prayer we prayed for them and we will continue to pray for her continued recovery we understand that sister valerie brown is not doing so well today not feeling well so she is requesting special prayer um sister sister janet reed is also uh, read more, requesting special prayer. Even Sister Sandra said so the devil is attacking her as usual and is requesting a special prayer. There are some of us who are sick 
uh, some not doing well. Uh, Brother Broomfield is also requesting the church's continued uh, prayer for him with, you know, some challenges that he's having. And I'm sure there are many, many more requests. And so as the praise team member, just sing for us once. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. If you are here right now and you have a desire, you have an issue, uh, you need a special prayer, whether for yourself or for your family, whoever it is, as we sing, we ask that you join us as the church stands. Please stand, everyone. Join us by the altar. Don't be afraid. Walk to the altar as our conservation elder, Elder Wilton McTyson, will say a special prayer for the people of God. Reach out and touch the Lord as he passes by. Reach out and touch the chart in heaven our compassionate father and our God we come bowing at your footstool this morning Lord because we know Lord we have no one else to turn to oh Lord we realize that you are the great life giver and Lord we cannot live without you in fact our very breath oh Lord that we take you loan it unto us each time and so we come bowing Lord here at this time because you are our great God. Oh Lord, we have come with our various challenges, our various issues, our various struggles that we faced even during this past week. Oh Lord. And Lord, we know that you are the great burden bearer. And so we come presenting them at your footstool at this time, Lord, that you'll remove every burden from us, oh Lord. And you help us to carry these burdens so we can be rest assured that we, are, we can feel light because you are with us. Yes. Then dear Father, those, those of us who are sick, Brother Amal Crosby at home sick, Sister Vivian Brown, Sister Sandra Simon Clark, who has requested prayer, Mr. Janet Reed Moore, Brother Clifton Green, and all the others who have requested prayer, O oh Father. Yes, Lord. Oh Lord, you know their condition, O oh Father, and you're the great physician. So we present them in your care, O oh Lord, that you will heal according to your will, and you'll bring them back to good physical health once more, Lord. Father, we know that we are approaching the end of time. And the devil is afflicting us left, right, and center with all manner of ailments, all manner of trials. Yes. Because he wants to distract us from reaching the goal. But Father, help us to put our faith firmly and firmly in you, knowing that you are our defender, our guide, our we are assured, oh Father, that you will defend us unto the end if we put our faith firmly in you. So Father, bless each person going before you at this time, oh God. Help us all, Lord, to put our trust in you, Father, because you are the God who believes in the well-being of all your people. Yes. Father, I pray that you help them, O oh Lord. Help us all to just trust you with our very lives. Because, Lord, you're coming up for prepared people, and we should be prepared to meet you when you shall come. Yes. So bless both man, woman, boy and girl at this time, Father. May we see you afresh today, O oh Lord. May we draw closer to you, Father. And Lord, we do not we don't know our time on this earth, but we know that with you, we can smile at every storm that, that we face bless each week. So bless everyone going here at this time. Bless all those who are watching online. May we give our lives totally to you, to you, Father, to guide and to protect us as we go from day to day. May we seek you afresh, dear Father. May we read your words daily, oh Father. May we commune with you, Father, every day. Because you want a relationship with us and you want to save us in the everlasting kingdom. So bless us all, we pray, Father. Bless your people who are sick once more, Father. Heal them, I pray, once more. Bless the world who are getting weak in faith. I ask Lord, you will strengthen all of us. Yes, and help us to look to you who is the author and finisher of our faith. God, and protect us, don't we pray, Father. And I pray that at the end of today's service, at the end of today's Sabbath, oh Lord, we'll all be drawn closer to you because you have been with us. 
all along, guiding us along the way. Bless us once more, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank you so much. You may return to your seats. And as you do so, just exercise faith in the Lord. I'm sure he will give you the victory. He will give you the deliverance. Whilst you go to your seats, I just also want to mention uh, the passing of one of our brothers, a very a relatively new believer. His name is Ralford Irving, and he was living at Coke Road, right? He died, I think, just about last week in hospital it was a brief stint he was admitted and died about two days or so afterwards his name is ralford irving he used to sit right on that side in elder bernard's class and sometimes he would wear a little stocking on his his head if you remember this is the same gentleman and so he has uh, passed quite sudden and we continue to pray for the family, his caretaker, sister, Miss Andrea, and his daughters and so forth. And I think their intention is to look at uh, the funeral early March, the early part of March. So let's continue to uh, pray for the family. And as time goes by, we will furnish you with additional information. God continue to bless you. Thanks. As we do continue our praise, we ask you to sing along with us, Majesty, worship his majesty, and we're going to praise him because he's worthy to be praised. And because he's worthy to be praised, Holy Spirit rain down. So do sing along with us, Majesty, worship his majesty unto Jesus. Be all glory, honor, and praise. Oh, yes, majesty, kingdom authority, flow from his throne unto his home, his hand teams raise. Do join us in singing.
Worship His Majesty. Worship His Majesty. Jesus who died. Jesus who died. Now glorify King of all kings. Praise Him.
rain down. the Lord because he is worthy of all our praise. The church will continue in worship. Again, we come into your presence on another Sabbath day to give you thanks and praise. Lord, you are worthy of all our praise. We invite your divine Holy Spirit to be with us. Open our hearts to receive your word and may it go forth with power and clarity. And may we go out and be disciples for you. Accept our praise and our worship today, we beg. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Take the world, but give me Jesus. All his joys are but a name, but his love abideth ever through eternal years the same. Three, two, nine, and we will start with the chorus. Oh, the highs and depths of mercy, oh, the land and breath of love.
I would love to hear my female sing in the first verse, Take the world, but give me Jesus. Take the world, but give me Jesus. All his joys are but a name. But his love abided ever through eternal years. Let's the same. Oh, gentlemen. Oh, Take the world, but give me Jesus, sweetest comfort to my soul. Take the world, but give me Jesus, sweetest comfort. Let's sing it all loudly, brothers. For me, I can see. Ladies, let's help them out. Take the world, but give me Jesus. Let me view his constant smile. Take the world, but give me Jesus. Let me view his constant smile. Then throughout my pilgrim journey, light will cheer me all the while. All the hearts and depth of mercy. Good morning, church. What do you think I'm here to do now? Okay, you're so correct. Welcome to the Glendavon Seventh-day Adventist Church, the place where miracles happen and lives are changed. My name is Donovan Doyle, and whether you are a longtime member or a first-time visitor, a member from one of our sister churches, a regular visitor, or you are joining online, we are excited to have you with us. Will all the Glendavon members just give those who are in the house, of our visitors, a Glendavon wave? Okay, just look at that. You look so beautiful down there. Just wish you could see yourself. At this church, we believe that each person who walks through these doors is here for a divine purpose. And today, we have a powerful service planned just for you. Before we proceed, let's take a moment to greet those around us and extend a warm welcome to everyone in our church family. So I'd like all of you now to stand 
and you are, whether you're going, to go, you're going to go ahead and share a smile, a handshake, a hug, even a high five. So do that now and make those who are around you feel welcome. Go ahead. And those who are online can just type in the chat, thank you, Lord, for loving me. Okay, I hope we don't have any more strangers and all of us are now feeling welcome. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds as we enter into a time of worship together and let's get ready to encounter God in a powerful way. Have a blessed Sabbath. If heaven-born love is an abiding principle in the heart, it will make itself known not only to those we hold most dear in sacred relationships, but to all with whom we come in contact. A thought from the Children's Ministries Department. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bro Tajay Dre Dryson will now bless the Lord with his song, Amazing Grace.
any size. You don't have to be an angel to be really special in his eyes. He said in John 3.16, and he proved it on Calvary too. God loves kids, ordinary kids, kids like me and you. Can we do that again? We still have some kids coming God up. God loves kids, any shape, any color, any size. You don't have to be an angel to be really special in his eyes. He said in John 3.16, and he proved it on Calvary too. Good morning, boys and girls. I know you don't have a clue who I am, so you have permission to call me Auntie Venice. So let me say again, good morning, boys. Good mo Auntie Venice, okay. <laughs> good morning, bigger boys and girls. Are we planning to go to heaven? After that little boy sang just now, I wondered how many persons did not make up their minds. If you didn't before, I hope you have. I want to be in heaven. Whatever it takes, I'm going to be there. Now, you are going to be telling, helping me tell a story this morning, right? So, let me ask you a question. When something bad happens or something that makes you frightened, do you put your hand over your mouth like... What do you do? You scream? You shiver? All right, so I'm going to ask you this morning, when you hear me speak about someone falling, that you're going to be behaving as you are very, very frightened. And you're going to do like this. And put your hand over your mouth. Can you do that for me? Come, let's practice. Okay, all right. So, my story this morning comes from the book of Acts. Let me see how many of you have ever heard this story. Anybody knows, can tell me what this word is? Eutychus. Can we spell it? Together? All right, let's do it again. E? It's a T-Y. Okay, so let's go again. E U T Y. All right, so you have to remember that name because I'm going to ask you a question, right? So, ever heard the name Eutychus before? All right, so my story this morning I've titled Eutychus and Paul The Power of the Prayer That Raised the Dead. Eutychus and Paul, the power that raised him from the dead. You got to listen. You got to listen. So it was Sunday afternoon, and there was a meeting being held in a house. Paul was preaching. Ever heard about Paul before? Yes. Yes. Ever been in a tall building with lots of stories? Yeah. Had to go up a lot of stairs? Yeah. Okay. So, they were in a building on the third floor, and Paul was preaching. Now, Paul is a talker, and Paul was talking for a long time. Any of you ever fell asleep in church? Yeah. Yes? Tell me. Fell asleep in church? Okay, what happened? You buck like this? Yes? Yeah. Okay, yes? What happened? When you fall asleep in church, what happened? Not sure? Okay, you just wake up and you wonder what happened. And some of you, you fall asleep, and it's when the service finished, 
And they say amen, and you wonder what happened. So Paul is preaching, and he's talking long. Do you anybody who preach and talk long, 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 long? <laughs> so Paul is there, and he's preaching, and he's preaching, and he's preaching. And he's telling the people about God, and he's telling the people about God. And then a young man named Eutychus, he comes in. So the place is already packed, jam-packed, so he can't find anywhere to be. So what does he do? He goes and he finds a seat on a window. Ever sat on a window? No? You're very, very lucky. But this day, Eutychus wasn't so lucky. So he went and he sat on the window. But as I said, Paul was talking long. And like anybody else who you know who speak for a long time, after a while, you lose your attention and you, you start feeling weary. And you start, what are the things you try to stay, do to stay awake? Tell me one thing you do to stay awake. Throw water on your face. Put water on your face. But Eutychus never had any opportunity. Tell me one more. Put cold water on your face. Put cold water on your face. You want to tell me? Shake your head. <laughs> Shake your head. All right, yeah? And I, um, rub your face. Rub your face. All right, trying to stay awake. Anyway, Eutychus was there and he was sleeping. Fell asleep, man, until he went into a deep sleep. And the next thing we know, Eutychus fell. He fell from the window three stories down. Down, 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 down. Three stories down, he fell. And Eutychus died. So what do you think everybody did? Everybody was frightened, right? Frightened. And everybody run down the stairs. Run down the stairs to find out what, see what happened when they went down there and they touched him. Eutychus was dead. Would you be scared? I'd be scared. But Paul did a fantastic thing that day. What do you think Paul did? Paul went and he took up Eutychus in his arms and he prayed. Anybody knows what that prayer may have sounded like? Tell me two, one line out of that prayer. If somebody for you died and you wanted them to come back to life, what would you ask God to do? Yeah. Heal him so he can come back to life. Okay, okay. So God held Eutychus in his arms and he prayed to God. And then Paul, sorry, and Paul, after he prayed, Eutychus came back to life. And everybody was just so amazed. Paul went back to his preaching. Paul went back to his preaching. And he preached until midnight. And the next day, Paul left and went somewhere else. But do you think there is power in prayer? Yes, there is power in prayer. So any, any one of you, any situation that you are in, who can we talk to? We can talk to God. And so today, we want to thank God that he has this avenue open to us so that we can talk to him anytime, anywhere. So can I ask you one question? What did you learn from this story today? Yes. Prayer is the strongest thing ever. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You want to tell me? Always listen to all the long preachings. <laughs> you want to share with me? Come up, come up, come up. Come up, come up. One. Don't fall asleep in church. You heard that? Don't fall asleep in church. Never sleep where a window is or never sleep <laughs> on a window. Never sleep where a window is. One more. Never fall asleep in church ever again. Never fall asleep in church ever again. All right. So they are having a grand time up here enjoying the fact that Okay, all right. So, I want to thank you all for listening this morning. And we're going to have a special prayer. I have a token for each one of you, but you will get it after divine hour. I'll be standing right at the door over there. If you're good boys and girls in church today, you will get your token when the service has ended.
Everybody is hearing that? Okay, so we are going to clasp our hands. We are going to close our eyes. Who's going to pray for me this morning? All right, so I see you putting up your hand for a long time. So you're going to pray for me. Drayden is going to pray this morning. So let us ask all our bigger boys and girls and all our little boys and girls to close your eyes as we talk to God, okay? Thank you, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So as you go back to your seat, remember that there is power in prayer. Go. Come forward to receive the day's tithes and offering. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. I am going to share a little testimony on giving. I decided I'm going to sow some pumpkin seeds in my backyard, and I, it yielded two pumpkins. And I decided I, I'll share them among my neighbors. And after sharing them, when the pumpkin seed healed another pumpkin, it was so awesome, big. And I, I was so surprised. You understand? I was so surprised. It healed up, the pumpkin weighed about 15 pounds. So God is awesome. Let us pray. Loving Lord and our Father in heaven, we truly want to give these thanks for today. We want to thank you, O Lord, that you have blessed us throughout another week. You have given us strength to work and to achieve, O Lord, as we are about to give back a portion of what you have blessed us with. We pray that you may bless those who have to give and those who have not to give, O Lord. We pray in your holy, precious name. Amen. Deacons, you may proceed.
passage of meditation comes to us from Deuteronomy 30, verses 19 and 20. When you find it, say amen. We read together. Together, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you that I have set for you life and death, blessings and cursing, therefore choose life, that both thou and their seed may live. There ends the reading of God's only word. and eternal father this morning we just want to give you thanks and praise for who you are you are such an awesome god and as we come this morning we are asking you to empty us of everything that is unlike you so that we can receive the blessings we come in need of bless us individually and collectively and Lord, help that as we praise you and adore you, our praise will come up to you as sweet incense. We are here not because of anything else, but because of your mercy and your love towards us. Continue to be our guide, our defender. And Lord, help that when life and earth is no more, that we who are here will aid thee as our personal savior from sin set free. This morning, we just want to ask you to be with the one who shall break the bread of life. Be with him. You know him. And as he speak your words, Lord, help us that we look into ourselves and make that right about turn where it is possible so that we can be a part of that great getting up morning. Continue to bless us, guide us, and protect us. And whatsoever we fail of asking you, in your wisdom, grant it unto us, we pray. Amen. Amen.
privilege is mine this morning to introduce our speaker. Our speaker is a young man with a strong voice. He's married to a beautiful princess who also has a strong voice. And they have a little prince who is a handsome little man. This young man is no stranger to us. He is a teacher by profession. And one thing I can surely say, he loves the Lord. I speak of no other than Brother Elder Odin Hawkins. But before he comes to give us the song of meditation is Tadri Brightson. Hear he him when he comes.
Happy Sabbath, saints of God. I reflect on that time when I was chained, when I was chained in sin, but unending love, what my young brother Bryson term as amazing grace. That has, that's what had made the difference in my life. And I believe that you share the same sentiments. Thank you very much, my young brother. That was beautiful uh, singing. We were tremendously blessed by those two renditions. And we trust that you may continue uh, to sing for the Lord and the Master as he continues to enlarge your territory and increase you in strength and in stature. Today, of course, was scheduled to be, or still remains, as the exchange of pulpit, but due to some challenges, there was a little diversion or a change here in Glen Devon, as Elder Dockery uh, should be speaking in Norwood at this time. And so we will seek at another time to have our very own as challenges were beyond our control. Today is a good day uh, to be in God's house, isn't it? It is an excellent day. It's not too uh, hot, right? The temperature seems right. We are uh, enjoying the weather of the tropics and so uh, we'll be saying our amens, our praise the Lord, our hallelujah, and our thank you, Jesus, because we are not cold, uh, neither are we lukewarm, but we are hot on fire for Jesus. Isn't that so? Uh, beautiful, beautiful. There's a song that I love, and I just ask those who can sing uh, better than I can, as I only sing for my students, and these days... I don't really do too much singing for those bigger ones because they will tell you as it is. The little ones, I could have taken a little more chance with them. But these bigger ones, they will not spare you the truth. And so I'll ask the praise team just to help me with the song, Oh, It Is Jesus. You see, we can never forget that it is Jesus. It has been Jesus. It is still Jesus, and it will forever be Jesus. We can search for answers everywhere, but it will all come back to that, that it is Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus, knowing it is Jesus. Yes, it is Jesus. Yes, it is Him. It's Jesus in my soul. In my soul. Yes. For I have touched. Yes, I have touched the hem of His garment. Oh yes, and that mighty blood, that powerful blood. It has made me whole. Won't you lift your voices and sing one more? One more time. Yes, it is Jesus. Do you know that it is Jesus? It is He who has given you life. It is His breath of life that is in your body. It is He who has spared your life to see another Sabbath day. It is He who has provided for you. Yes, I have touched the hem of his garment and that mighty blood yes the blood of Jesus our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed gracious God our everlasting father though before whom angels bow veil in their faces crying day and night holy 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 is lord god almighty 
To you we come bowing one more time. Some are bowed even now of shrines or of gods are made of sticks and stones and wood and even the God from the figment of man's sinful imagination. But we come before the Abba Father. We come to the great creator, the redeemer, the sustainer, the God who was, the God who is, and the God who forever will be. We come before the God whose power has no bound, whose power has no limit. We pray even now, gracious God, by your power and your might, that you may still the hands of the enemy even now. Chain him, gracious God, lest he be permitted to snatch the words from our hearts. May as the words go forth, may it be attended with power and with clarity, so that even a child may understand May you bless each worshiper as we have come this morning. May somebody even through the preaching of the gospel say yes to Jesus today. May somebody say, I yield to you. No more will I grieve you. Lift up your name in this place. It is not I, but it is you who we lift up now. And your words declare that if we lift you up, then you will draw all men unto you. And as they look, they shall be saved. Bless now your words. Touch these on the lips of mine. I am nothing and but unworthy, a simple lump of clay, an instrument in thy divine hand. I come availing myself to you, Lord. And I'm saying if you can use anything today, use me, Lord. Bless our online audience. May they too make their covenant with you. May covenants be renewed with you today as we look forward to your soon return. Bless us now to this end. We pray and say thanks in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. Amen. Oh, yes, it is Jesus. We dive into the Word of God. The choices are a natural occurrence of life. In fact, as our responsibilities in life increases, so does the multitude of choices to be made. Uh, one researcher uh, theorizes that for the average adult, he or she makes over 3,500 choices per day. Uh, we make choices on any and everything that we do. We make choices sometimes uh, based on the facts or evidence presented to us about something. Uh, sometimes we uh, make choices uh, based on our impulses. Other times, and even more so from the feminine gender, choices are often made based on emotions. Isn't that so? That doesn't mean that the masculine gender does not make choices uh, based on emotion as well. But it's more common among females. Isn't that so, Sister Sterling? I see Sister Dunn nodding her head. And I hear Sister, uh, uh, Sister Carr say, no, it's not. We can agree to disagree. Nonetheless, uh, we make choices based on uh, some of these uh, issues. Uh, we make choices every day. Uh, all of us are here uh, right now simply because we chose to be here. And even a child made a choice to be here. Perhaps a child may say, I had no choice. Mommy forced me. The truth is that you could have been a rebellious child and you ran away from accompanying your parents. 
You chose what to eat for breakfast this morning. Yes, somebody might say, uh -uh, I never chose because I only had uh, that one option. But yet you had another choice. You could have stayed hungry. You chose to uh, be attired as you are today uh, because you chose that. Even if it is the one. And so we all make choice. Uh, uh, we are numbering up our choices there according to the uh, researcher uh, to be about 3,000, rather not 3,500, but rather 35,000 choices uh, daily. Even right now we are here, we are choosing whether we listen to the preacher or not. Whether we'll be more concerned about the time other than the message that God has sent to us today. We choose the way we live. But know this. That all our choices comes with a consequence. All the choice that we make in life, they come with a consequence. Whether it be good or whether it be bad. Whether it be a positive result are a negative result but we all must face the consequences of our choices you see i've never seen or even heard of a farmer planting a uh, yellow yam only to reap after about nine to twelve months i believe that's the time they say that uh, yam comes to maturity only to reap white yam or negro yam or renta yam after that period, he reaps, he plants yellow yam, and as such, he will reap yellow yam. I've never heard of someone planting corn yet to reap red peas. What you reap is what you sow. As some, place, some persons uh, blame others in life for how their life has turned out. In fact, some even goes a little further by blaming God for the way their life has turned out. But I hear one artist saying, don't blame life, else you blame the one who give it. Don't blame life, but blame the way you live it. In spite of all these choices, uh, these important choices that you will have to make, that you and I will have to make in life, uh, when to marry, who to marry, I thought I would hear amen. Who to marry and when to marry, uh, what career to choose, how many children to have or even if any to have, uh, we still make the important choice of what insurance or investment policy we should choose among a myriad of other choices. We all have the ultimate choice in life. Whether you believe it or not, whether you accept it to be truth or not, all of us, no one excluded uh, from every nation, language, kindred, or tongue. At some point in our lives, we are confronted or we will be confronted uh, with the choice to choose whether we will serve God or whether we will serve him not. I speak to you today on the subject. On the subject... Two roads, but only one choice. Two roads, but only one choice. And so we must make that choice. And I'm not talking about uh, saying that we're choosing God uh, simply by the fact that we get up in the morning and we say, uh, thank you, Jah. Uh, for sparing my life to see another day. I'm not only talking uh, uh, mere, uh, just getting your meal and saying thank you God for providing this meal. And so we're saying that we have chosen God. But I'm speaking of a life committed to him. In the words of Moses, as read for your scripture reading, turn with me to Deuteron Deuteronomy chapter 30. The verse is 19. 
Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, the book of uh, Moses. The Lord, through Moses, presented two roads to the people of that time. And it's still being presented to the people of present day. He said, read with me. I, I don't hear you reading with me. Let's go together. I call heaven and earth to record this against you. Hold on right there. And so in other words, in other words, it has been inscribed and registered in the books of heaven to say that the Lord has called you uh, today. You know, that's why the word of God say that when you go to uh, do missionary work and you are rejected, you should shake the dust from your feet. Because it will stand in the day of judgment. Just as uh, Moses had said that I've called heaven and earth this day. It will be recorded uh, that the gospel, it came to you. And so he said, we continue reading. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. That I have set before you what? Life. And death. We stop right there. We'll get back to this text shortly. Now Matthew speaks of a similar choice in St. Matthew chapter 7 verse 13 and 14. So jump with me quickly over there uh, to St. Matthew chapter 7 uh, verses 13 and 14. A uh, well-known text that we should be able to recite easily from memory. It says, Enter he in the straight gate. Pause right there. Here, another choice is presented. It goes on to say, For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there uh, be which go in there at. So Matthew is also presenting two roads, but he's saying that you can't choose both, you can only choose one. When it comes to God, it's not in the river, on the bank. When it's come to God, you can't be in and out. It's either you're in or you're out. But there's no middle, middle ground when it comes on to God. Now let us compare both texts. Let us compare both texts. Let's compare and contrast both of them. So I asked the media team to assist me by putting Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 there. And you will keep your Bibles on St. Matthew 17 uh, verse 13 and 14. So we are looking at both uh, texts. We are comparing and contrasting both of them. Now we can establish that both of them presented two choices, can we? Both presented two choices. The choices are similar, however, worded differently. Or let me say it the other way. The choices are worded differently, however, they are similar choices as both are presenting an appeal to accept salvation. Careful, with careful analysis that is. And so they both present an appeal which requires a response. Whether to serve God or whether not uh, to serve him. Now I told you earlier that we make uh, choices differently based on facts, based on emotion, or based on impulses. But would you agree with me that it is better to make choices based on facts presented? I would believe so. Because we are hoping to get the best possible result. 
Now, I remember some time ago, I went to an, access an accessory store uh, because I wanted to purchase an ear pod. For the younger ones, that's the thing that you put in your ears. For the younger ones. Right? The thing you put in your ears to hear from your phones. And so I went to uh, multiple stores uh, because whilst many others may uh, go to purchase this and just be focused on the, the brand or the cost uh, to say that, you know, just the other day I learned that there, there is a, somebody uh, at my school whilst there was a function uh, lost an ear pod or ear bud and, and I discovered that it cost $30,000. I was shocked. And not, and not even that, I was told that there are others who are more expensive. I was so shocked. I never knew that those little things could be so expensive. Me na bite. Anyhow, and so I went into this particular, so, so I was not only concerned about um, the brand, uh, I was not concerned so much about whether it was uh, too cheap, I don't want it to be too expensive because I'm not going to spend $30,000 on that. But I was not so much uh, motivated by that. I was looking for specifics. I wanted one that was balanced, that had a little base in it. And so I went to this store and, and I listened to a number of them and I, and, I, and I picked what I thought was the better option or the best option. Now after purchasing it, I, I plugged it into my ears and I was walking out of, my, out of the store but it fell out of my ear. And I put it in back again and it fell out again. Now I don't know if my ear was too small or what. But it kept on falling out. So I turned back around and I went back into the store and I called the man's attention and I said, I don't want this one. It's falling out of my ears too many times. And, and, he, and of course, you know that Chinaman don't want to give back money. They're going to give you more options. So he presented me with some more options. Now he showed me one that was above my budget. I'm not buying that. Too expensive. Because th those things are easy to get lost. So, so I would have listened and I said, this one is too low. And, and, and as a matter of fact, after listening to it and tried, I realized that he broke it and, and disposed of it. So it wasn't really functioning properly. And I tried other brands and I said, mm -mm, I don't like them. So I just asked for a refund of my money. And he did. And I went to another store and I told a young lady that I want one that sound good. I wanted one that had a little bass. And I, and I noticed that there were a number of them uh, in the glass case. And I said, uh, let me see this one, this one, and that one. So she took out three of them. And, and all of them were varied in styles and price. And of course, I thought that the most expensive one uh, would have been the best option. But she put one aside and said, this one is the best one. And so I started listening to all of them and I said, okay, this one, not so much. This one, I said, oh, can work. But then I listened to the one that she recommended and I discovered that it was the best option. So what did I do? I chose that one and it works perfectly fine. And as such, I made that choice to purchase that particular uh, ear pod due to the fact that were presented to me. Follow me carefully. Now let's examine uh, both texts. Uh, let's get back to the text. Uh, uh, we're going uh, now to Deuteronomy 30 uh, verse 19. Yes, it's there on your screen. And we'll compare it again uh, to Matthew 7 and 13. Now both texts are presenting facts to guide our choice. Deuteronomy uh, 30 verse 19 and 20 uh, presented uh, some facts 
uh, it said, uh, I, um, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I have set before you life and death, blessings and curse. Therefore, choose life that both thou and thy seed uh, may live. And it goes on to provide more facts by saying that thou mayst love the Lord thy God and that thou mayst obey his voice and that thou mayst cleave unto him. Now, here are some of the facts and some of the promises are, are, are the possible uh, consequences of choosing the Lord. For he said, for he is thy life. And the, and, and, and the length of the days that thou mayst dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, uh, to Isaac, and to uh, Jacob, and to give them. Uh, so the writer is saying that these are the facts. These are the result if you should choose the Lord's side. But of course, if you do not choose the Lord's side, then death is what is promise. So facts are being given. And, and in our time now, this land uh, is being spoken of, uh, is being reflected as the new Jerusalem, the earth uh, being made new. Now jump now to, in your Bibles, this one will stay on the screen, jump now to Matthew 13 and 14. Uh, it says, the broad way leads to destruction, even though most will choose this option. So even by virtue of sight, you can know which one is which one. Because the Bible said that more are on this, or most choose uh, this option. It further states that the straight and narrow way leads to... Come on, follow me, follow me. The straight and narrow way leads to life. And few there who will find it. And then it says, another fact, another critical fact, it says that uh, those who uh, choose, in summary or in um, paraphrasing, it, that those who choose the broad way, their end is destruction. So the facts are there presented. There are two uh, important points I want to make from these uh, texts. So the facts are presented. This will happen if you choose life, this will happen if you enter into the straight way. Uh, this will happen if you choose death. And this will happen if you choose to enter in the broad way. So choose wisely. Look at both texts again. Look at both texts again. There's something very critical that both texts have in common. Just look closely for a few seconds. Look at them for a second. Now, even if you don't have all the facts, or even if you think that something important is left out in the information presented to help to guide your decision or your choice. Something critical, very important or paramount in these two texts that is presented that should help us to make a conscious and or a wise decision or the best or better for the two um, decisions. Hear me somebody. Hear me, somebody. You may be contemplating serving God, but there are questions in your mind that are unanswered. There, there are some facts that you, you don't have, and it is hindering you. Uh, there are some of us as Christians uh, that there are some facts that we don't have, and it might be preventing us from having a more meaningful uh, relationship with God. But, but follow me carefully. You may not know the Bible from Genesis uh, to Revelation, you may not be able uh, to explain the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. In fact, you might not even understand them for yourself. You may not know enough about the Bible. You might not even know enough, you may think, about this God. 
Sometimes there are still unanswered questions in your mind. And they're standing between you and your God. Between making that decision to surrender or to fully surrender to him. You may have been experiencing some challenges. Some hardship in your walk that you don't understand. And you are baffled with what choice to make. Should I turn back? On this pathway, I have had enough. I've been battered. I've been bruised. I've been beaten down. I've been trodden on. Should I continue? Should I press forward? Or should I retreat and go back to Egypt? Might be questions lingering in your minds. But just in case, just in case the facts are not enough in your own estimation, just in case you are still uh, not sure because the devil is trying to confuse you. Hear the words of God in Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. Hear what the word of God said. I call on heaven and, and, heaven and earth to record uh, this uh, day. But guess what? That's not my favorite part. My favorite part is right down there in the middle of the text where the Lord is saying that somebody out there, somebody here, if you are confused, if you are not sure uh, what to choose, life or death, blessing or curse, the Lord in his tender voice, in his tender pity, the Lord in his mercy, wrapped up in amazing grace, he says, choose life. Choose life, he says. Then, I like the way that Matthew starts that text in St. Matthew 7, verse 30. What's the first word there? What's the first word there in St. Matthew 7, verse 30? What's the first word? What's the Lord saying? What's the Lord saying? The Lord is saying, hear me. I am presenting before you the better of the two options. Hello, somebody. You don't see it yet. You don't see it yet. You don't see that. Put it on the screen for me. Matthew 7, uh, verse uh, 13. We are comparing both texts. In Deuteronomy uh, 30, verse 19, the Lord said, If you are confused, if you are unsure what choice uh, to make, choose life. In Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 13, the Lord is presenting the better of the two options at first by saying, enter he in at the straight gate. So even if you are not clear in all the facts, even if there are still unanswered questions in your mind, even if you are still troubled and perplexed as to what is the better of the two options presented, the Lord is saying that this is the better of the two options. He's saying, enter he in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. So the Lord is saying, listen, don't be confused. Don't get it twisted. I am telling you that this option is the one that is better for you. Because the other option will ruin you. Uh, the other option will thread you to pieces. You know, I've seen so many who once walked with God and no longer walk with him. I've seen so much misery that has been brought to their lives. And I've seen those too who seemingly are prospering uh, by turning away from the narrow way. But the Bible said that what we reap, we will sow. Now what more do we need to make our decision to follow Jesus? Allow me to extract and paraphrase words from our first elder as used last week. As he dealt with the issue of time, where he mentioned that many of us are growing weary, 
Many of us, our lights are growing dim in this the waiting period of the Lord's return. Many of us are growing cold and worse, lukewarm. But this is a time that we ought to be on fire for Jesus. This is a time that we ought to be on fire for Jesus. Listen to me carefully. This is a time that we ought to be more serious about our salvation uh, than any other time. This is a time that we ought to be more serious about the salvation of others than any other time. This is a time that we must call, we, may, we must give the trumpet a certain sound. We must let the world know that there is a God in heaven and he's still in control. This is a time that we should let the world know that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. This is a time that we should be calling our neighbors, our friends, our enemies, our families who are backslidden. Now is a time that we should be calling them back to Jesus, calling them back to the narrow way, for they are on a path of destruction. My second to last text before I come down. Because even in spite of the facts presented, and even the encouragement that God gives or has given to choose the better option, there are still many who are saying to the Lord, Lord, let me live my life. Do whatever I want because it's my life. But know this. Know this, somebody out there listening to me, I don't know where you are. You might be listening from your neighbor's stereo. You might be listening as you're passing the church. You might even be in the church because all is still not well with Israel. The Lord is saying, in Ecclesiastes chapter 9, sorry, 11, verse 9, and this was young man is uh, the noun used it is not restricted to one of a youthful age but it is mentioning or referencing to mankind in it is in its entirety male and female ecclesiastes 11 verse 9 rejoice O young man in thy youth and let thine heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth. And walk in the ways of thine heart. And in the sight of thine own eyes. You see, God will not come down and twist our arms behind us. And say, walk in this pathway. He said, I present before you life and death. But I'm saying to you, as a loving God, as a redeemer, choose life. But he won't force us. He won't force us how to live. He won't force us how to do according to his will. He will leave us. He will leave us. He will keep running, us, keep running after us. But he will allow us to have our own way. Because that's what love does. Love does not force. But he said... Walk in, in your own, walk in your own ways and in the, own, in, the, in, in the sight of thine own eyes. Walk in your own sinful path. This is not what I want, but this is what you want. So uh, go ahead. But, he says, but, I like the use of the word, but. It's a conjunction that shows two opposites. And so he says, but. Know that for all these things, God will bring into judgment. So do whatever you want. Plant whatever seeds you want in your life. Contrary to my commands. Uh, uh, do what you want. Even though I am encouraging you, I'm pleading with you, I am begging you uh, to choose the better options. In the end, the choice is yours, so choose. But know that in the end, all things 
will come in judgment. My final text, Galatians 6, verse 7 and 8. We won't be reading the entire text. Be not deceived. Be not fooled. You see, God is a very merciful God. And many of us as parents, we can relate to God's long-suffering. Because God is very long-suffering. He will tarry, he will linger, he will plea with us for very long. I can't put a limit on God's long-suffering. But I know that God would have lingered with a stubborn wretch like me. He lingered for long. But can I tell you something? That even as a good parent, there are times uh, when you talk to uh, your children and you're counseling them against certain practices and certain behavior. And you might say, if you do this, I'm going to do that. And sometimes you might say, all right, I'm going to give them a little chance. And they do it again. And you may say, if you ever do it again, you and I. Am I the, am I the only one? Am I the only one? All right. But there comes a time. There comes a time when the law, when the, when the line has to be drawn. And you say, enough is enough. You got to get the, because you're not intending on changing. You are taking my patience and my love for granted. So even though God is long suffering, even though, even though God is loving, even though He's one hundred percent loving, kind, and merciful and gracious, He's still one hundred percent a God of justice, and He will come to a time when even God's patience will run out. So he says in Galatians 6, 7, and 8, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. Today is presented before you two roads. But you can only choose one. And you may say to yourself that what if I don't choose? But not choosing is also choosing. Not choosing is also choosing. So you still have a choice. For there is no middle ground. There is no alternatives. There is no other options. You know, sometimes when I tell my son to go to his bed, he has, a, he has, a, he has an 8 o'clock uh, bedtime, and sometimes he's doing something, and it's very engaging, and he, he, he's learning to read time. So we will say to him, my wife and I will say to him, that at 8.00, it's your bedtime. And so he knows how to look at it on his tablet and know it's 8.00. And when it gets to that time, and we say it's bedtime, he begins to negotiate. <laughs> he will say 10 more minutes. <laughs> he doesn't even understand what is 10 minutes. <laughs> he will say 10 more minutes. And when we say no, he's still trying. He's going to say five more minutes. <laughs> You might say, all right, five more minutes. So at 8.05 or 8.05, it's bedtime. But there's no alternative with God. In this respect, God says it's either or either. We can't implement any tap. We can't implement any uh, kind of kill with God when it comes on to uh, negotiation and uh, compromise. I was saying to my neighbor some weeks ago, that can you imagine if God was like man? That we could bribe him. Because our country has become so corrupt. 
But that even free services, you have to pay to get attention. And I was just saying to him that what if God was like man, that we could bribe him? But thank God, God is God. And so God will not compromise or negotiate on what he has said. And so my brothers, my sisters, my friends, those of you who are online, today has been presented before you two roads, but one choice. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. The number is 327, as we sing, as we meditate upon these words.
Father, we thank you for your word today to your manservant. We thank you for the reminder. We pray in a very special way that your Holy Spirit will impress upon our heart that we will digest these words. May we apply our hearts unto wisdom and may we seek to live in harmony with your will. And oh God, be with all of us in us. Those who online, we ask in a very special way that your Holy Spirit will reach down. And together, let us unite to finish your work. We pray for everyone present. We pray in a very special way for visiting friends who are here today. We pray that soon and very soon, before time change for eternity, we ask, Lord, that they will surrender to you so that your will will be done. Help us, O oh God, to remember the Sabbath day to keep it all. Help us, O oh Lord, to remember the pledge that we have made to you. And we thank you for delivering all of us so that we could be here today to lift up your name. Continue to bless us. Continue to be with us. And as we break now to refresh ourselves, may your presence be with us today in Jesus' holy name. Duncan would like to meet with all deaconesses immediately after service. to the to my right Onward Christian soldier 